Hello everyone, Rob Pilger with Louis Simmons. Louis, you hear a lot of uh, West Side for uh, football, West Side for baseball. Is there a West Side for fighters? I can ask a lot of questions. What do you do? Uh, basically, West Side training is exercise specificity. You have to train for your sports. Of course, this sport, boxing and all grappling sports, you have to have high endurance. So we do a lot of sled work, lower and upper body sled work. And primarily, there's three ways to correct the dip weights. The dynamic method, where you sub maximum weights to maximum force, like hitting someone fast, that's how they knock them down. Uh, maximum effort, where you lift heavy weights for a single rep, test your maximal strength. No one can lift a heavy weight slow, don't forget that. And then the repetition method to near failure. And that's like boxing, and you want to use repetition until failure starts to sit in, that meaning fatigue. They feel like when, when me and Rob and I box, if my arm's just so tired I can't stand up, I better quit boxing. Right? Or if I can't even hit him, at that point you might as well stop and, and because your technique is gone. So, I hope that answers the question basically. Yeah, let's talk about needs. We're just talking before we started doing this about, like you're saying, you evaluate somebody for your work. There's yeah. no shake and bake method. Um, that's the problem with the fucking internet is you get a lot of these questions and that's not them solving anybody out there answering the questions. But you have to be realistic because there's not a shake and bake method of always say you're a fighter and this is what you gotta do. You have to evaluate them and you can tell tell them what you're telling me as far as a lot of some guys may not even need much max strength and it may be well I, I think Frank Mir's a good example. He realized that he was beat by one opponent, strength. Brock Lesnar was just so much stronger than him. His technique skill was a two to his ten, but he got beat by Brock because he got overpowered. So he went down and started working with Philippi, the strength coach of UNLV. He gained strength and then he walked walked right through his next opponent at Chicago. And the same thing. Some people don't need it. Carl Godden was a famous grappler years ago. And Carl didn't believe in any weight, but Carl, I believe, was extremely strong, so he stayed away from weight. But some people need it. And um, Carl Sanderson, for example, he was 159-0 and as a wrestler in college, but his brother came to me because he was getting beat in international matches. We worked on uh, good mornings, and this being a good morning, searcher squats, lifting weights in the elbows like a takedown, and a lot of sled work. And I'm not saying that's why he won the Olympics, but it made him strong enough that he wasn't overpowered by the Europeans. We worked on his knees. Worked on his knees. And that's what you have to get. You know, if you're going to ask these questions, you know, or if you're a fighter, you really have to look at what do you really need. You know, most sought after uh, strength quality in fighting sports, all fighting sports, even rolling here, is, um, you know, explosive power. Power when you're on the ground to shoot in on somebody, and obviously with the hands and the legs, the kicks. And one of the prerequisites for explosive power, maximum strength and speed, and that's what you, you know, if you're, if you're not strong, you obviously have to have that in the program, maximum strength. And, um, you know, if, if you're slow, speed. And again, that's what we're saying here at all. Start the evaluation. And what I was trying to say too earlier is, what about um, as far as the, the volume and the intensity, which I think a lot of people have this conception of? Okay. Well, number one, gentlemen like this, they have to be explosive in a fatigued state. When they get tired, they still have to be explosive. They're going to get their ass kicked at the end of a fight. So they still have to be explosive. And uh, even a marathoner has to sprint to the finish line sometimes. And uh, your question was about as far as uh, intensity. You know, we run in three week waves. Like Rob will come in and lift weights. He'll try. He'll, he'll, he'll do a, a fairly same exercise for three weeks, adding weight each week. But at the end of three weeks, Rob can evaluate his success on how fast he is, um, and that, that's a key. And every week when he maxes out, he can evaluate his success on how actually strong he is. So one day is, de is designed the dynamic method, force equals mass times acceleration to develop explosive speed. The other day, uh, maximum strength. But see, so each week we can evaluate Rob's strength every every Monday or every Wednesday and his speed every Friday or every on the weekend if he does speed bench, upper bench. I'm working with fighters, and what I was mumbling about earlier is there's nothing set in stone. Again, we're evaluating somebody, we don't know what you need until, you, until, you, until we evaluate you. Um, and as far as sparring, for instance, you know, uh, when you bring Chris up to spar, I won't touch, I will not lift that week. I won't do any upper body, I'm like, they're going to work with I surely won't touch any max effort weights because that, uh, sparring, that will drain you from the sparring. So everything changes as far as what, what your needs are, or excuse me, as far as program design, depending on the sparring. And, and if you're beat up in the weight room, this is common sense, but yet it isn't because a lot of people don't practice it, in terms of what you're going to do right for the next time. It would be much better for Rob to teach a person skills and then make them stronger than to have a real strong guy and try to teach them skills. 
because uh, basics, it doesn't work that way. In the Soviet Union, it's called general physical preparedness. They start ch children out of 12 years old in a variety of exercises, and then they determine if they're going to be a grappler, a volleyball player, a basketball player, or what. So, buyer but, beware, all that shit you see out there with some of these, there are some good guys out there, don't get me wrong, put out products online, but all this, some of this shit that you see with all the marketing about building explosive power, making you the best fighter possible, if you don't have a skill for that, um, fight this is when you're screwed. You gotta learn how to fight first. Nice on the gate. I don't obviously have to tell him anything. That's a strength. One last thing. Anything new you're doing as far as uh, conditioning? We do a lot of kettlebell work, a lot of band work for high repetitions. I'm a firm believer in sled work. I work with a lot of football players. I don't want a guy on a weight machine. I want him walking while he's getting stronger. And pulling his sled or upper body work, he accomplishes both at the same time. I know, I want to say one thing too in behalf of Westside. Fedor says, if you want to watch me train, go to Russia. And if you want to learn Westside, you better come to Westside. Don't read a book or listen to some bullshit on the internet. Come to the real deal and find out what it's like. And I appreciate you taking the time for this because I, I get asked a lot of questions online about Westside for this and Westside for that. You're hearing out of the horse's mouth and um, I appreciate you taking the time for this.